Hey everybody, welcome to Dad's Den of Pop Culture. Today I'm looking at Alterna Comics uh, Winter Bundle, recently arrived at my domicile, and uh, mostly read. I have one that I still need to go through and, and read, but I have looked through it. But I wanted to go ahead and get a little bit of a review out on the ones that I had read. Um, because most of these were new to me, and I uh, just wanted to get my thoughts down while they were still fresh in mind. So, first up, this is a series that is not new to me. You can find another video I've done on the first six issues. And this is issue seven of Wolf and Batsy. Obviously, this is a horror comic, as you can tell from the rather gory front cover. I'm a big fan of Wolf and Batsy, Brian Baugh. I'm also a big fan of anything that involves people in gorilla suits. Well, maybe not anything, but, uh, but old movies especially. Um, and this is actually, even though I just now got this, this is actually what got me into Wolf and Batsy to begin with. Um, and I mentioned this in the other video, I'd followed Brian's art on uh, deviant art for a long time I was aware of him um, and I was aware that he had a Wolf and Batsy comic that I hadn't really looked at but in following him on Twitter I found out that his next issue was going to involve a guy in a gorilla suit and that's always been one of my uh, <laughs> one of my true loves are old movies with people in gorilla suits. I don't know why, but I just love them. And then, of course, I also found out that Alterna Comics was making uh, actual floppies, which I love. And so that got me to not only back the, the winter uh, bundle, uh, but also then to go and buy the first six issues, which were already in print, and therefore I got before this arrived. So, Gorilla Suit Maniac, this is a story contained in a single issue um, uh, from, as it says, from the untold tales of Wolf and Batsy. And it is a goodie. Great art here on the gorilla suit. So this one, you, you got, um, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a single, single story contained in this issue. But it has some nice little pieces about about Wolf and Batsy's history, shall we say. Um, Brian does a great job of keeping some of this mysterious, not revealing everything all at once. Um, for example, right down here, two old classics that I... Um, that I must have seen a dozen times in their original theatrical run, but hadn't seen since. Okay. Well, original theatrical run, we're talking about Frankenstein and Dracula. We're talking about the 1930s. Well, how old are these characters? Well, when is this thing? I'm not really sure. I don't know. But it's interesting. You Okay, he's around, this werewolf. For the original theatrical run of these movies. Okay, that's interesting. What does that mean? Um, and so there's some nice flirtation between the characters. Look at that great art on Karloff and Lugosi. And then we meet this fella. Now this, this is what, I'm going to elevate this a little bit, get a better look. Some of the art done on this fella reminded me of some of Will Eisner's work. It's Eisner-esque, I would call it. Um, or some of the stuff we've seen in Mad Magazine back in the day, Jack Davis. Um, simple, simple line work, but look at the, look at the sadness. Look how defeated that face is. I really love that. And we hear this man's story about his dream, and here's where he is before it had all gone wrong. 
his dream of going to Hollywood and being a guy in a gorilla suit. Now, how many of us have, have had that dream? It's nothing new. And, of course, the story does not go well for him. He doesn't become the big gorilla star he thought he was going to. And so now he is crestfallen and defeated back at home. But some really great art in this and a great love letter to the period and to the movies of this of that period, which is obviously something that Brian loves and one of the things that so many people connect over. We get some stuff from old Tarzan picture. So ultimately, his story told, and Batsy in her naive way, encourages him to put the gorilla suit back on and be a street performer and live out your dream. <laughs> and since this is a horror comic, uh, living out his dream doesn't work quite as well as one would hope as he is insulted and demeaned by a juggler. A juggler who juggles very dangerous items, such as an axe. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to spoil the comic for you. But obviously things go downhill from there. And Wolf and Batsy have to get involved. And we can see from the cover you get a little idea of how badly things go. The Winter Bundle also had a sketch cover variant. And... It had some collector cards. We got Wolf. I love the little stat thing. I'm going to use that. I'm going to make some Mystery Men stats for these characters. We got Batsy with her little stats as well. And we got Abigail Moore from Tinseltown. And it's a tinsely, shiny little card. That's another one that I've talked about. Um... In another video, I really enjoyed that whole series of Tinseltown. So Wolf and Batsy number seven, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I think it's a good addition to the run. And of course, I'm looking forward to more. Next up, Unit 44. This is a new one to me. Uh, this is number seven. Um, and it is also another like self-contained issue. You have these two characters who are reminiscent of uh, the X-Files. The, the humor struck me as being a little bit like Justice League International, written by Wes Lochner, uh, drawn by Landon Franklin. Um, nice art, color art. Now, this is a, this is a humor book, um, you know, with some action in it, but it is a humor book. And I'm always leery because comedy is really hard to do and it's really hard to do well. But I did enjoy it. I chuckled at it. I enjoyed it. I had some fun with it. That these two um, are not in... Um, they're not beloved by their boss. Unit 44, which is based out at Area 51, which is not that far from where I live. When you get right down to it, they're sent to investigate the Mothman. Oh, one of the classic cryptids, the Mothman. And they meet up with this sheriff, or I'm sorry, deputy, who's kind of telling them about the town they're going to. And um, they're not super excited. There's a lot of weirdos in this town. We got the woman, the woman in the hair curlers, talking about uh, what she saw, the mothman who shows up every so often. And uh, Hatch there, I believe that's Hatch marks down that he believes she is in fact crazy. He thinks this whole thing is a bunch of bunk. His partner isn't so sure. Now what I really enjoyed yeah, was the depiction of the Mothman himself. Very strong. Um, right up in, into uh, the dude's face. Attacks him. He believes in it after he gets attacked, believe it or not. And then they have to figure out a way to capture this Mothman, now knowing that he is real. And that was... Um, and so a plan is concocted. 
and uh, and put into effect. Great art, and I did. It was a funny book. It's um, it's a dry sense of humor. It's uh, it's sarcasm, um, and uh, which you know, um, X Files oftentimes used exactly that kind of humor. But um, yeah, I enjoyed Area, I enjoy, Area Forty Four. I enjoyed Unit Forty Four. I'll look for more of those in the future. I, I might grab some back issues on that one as well. Now this next one, a little tough to review because it's Blood Realm number 12 and it is part three of a three-part story. Not exactly the best way to jump into a series. Just note that the bundle also came with this little art piece. This one, um, it ain't called Blood Realm for nothing. Very stark art, but it is very effective, very visceral. And we get this tale from the mythic past. Warriors and wizards. Magic swords. And people gone wrong. This Mavericks thing looks pretty cool. I gotta check that out too. Um, and then we flash forward into the future. Where they discover the body of that warlord. And... All sorts of horrors are unleashed and have to be fought off. Um, so again, it you know it's hard to judge because I'm coming in right at sort of the end of this story, but I did really I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I wanted I want to learn more, um, and the art was very cool. It's sort of sci-fi fantasy, a little maybe post-apocalyptic. Um, like I said, very visceral art. Um, I like the, the black, white, and red sort of color scheme of the thing. Violent, gory. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, I would uh, I would highly recommend this. It's got a definite epic feel to it. This is um, this isn't a cute little slice of life kind of comic. And it all comes down to this fella. And so the there's a, the framing element element is of this um, this little robot droid. Wow, he really because he wouldn't be an android because he doesn't look like a human being, does he? Um, any rate, um, him telling a story to another old droid about what happened on this, I guess, kind of wrecked spaceship um, with this ancient evil awakening. Cool. It was a cool book. Um, yeah, I, I, I highly uh, I highly recommend checking that one out if you like sci-fi, fantasy, sword, sorcery, blood, guts, etc. I'm going to save one for last here, but I'm going to talk this one first. Now, this is the one I have not gotten to read yet. It is an 80-page, monster-sized milestone. And, you know, this is, uh, I'm recording this on Labor Day, uh, a couple days after we had some pretty major flooding here in town. So the last couple of days I've been pretty busy. Um, so I haven't had time to read through this one, but it looks great. It's an anthology. A lot of different stories. They look interesting. Nice art throughout. And this one reminds you some of the great black and white comic magazines from the 70s and 80s. Um, we get a behind the cover on Frankie B. Washington. You see some of the work that went into the cover. And you see some more. We get Mr. Crypt. A rather long Mr. Crypt story. And we also get a little gallery of past covers of It Came Out on a Wednesday. So, anthology piece. Check it out. All right, this was the surprise for me out of the batch. Horace H. Hoover. This is number two in a five-issue limited series. I am going to be buying number one, and I'm going to be collecting the series. Um, written, drawn, etc. by uh, Fabrizio Ariello. Now, you know, when I saw pictures of this one, it's like, oh, is this going to be sort of like kind of cutesy? You know, because it's, it's, well, it's either a guy with an old vacuum cleaner on his head or it's a, uh, a vacuum cleaner with a human body. And uh, I'm actually still not entirely sure. 
you know, you just, you don't know going in. Again, I said, you know, it looked, is it like a sort of whimsical humor thing? Um, cause those are hard to handle, but man, it, it was handled really well. I really enjoy the art. I enjoy the writing. Um, it's one of the best written things I've read in a while. We start off with Horace Hoover visiting this, um, old spiritualist to contact um, uh, a dead man who, who lived downstairs from him whose spirit is tied to the, a children's book and um, they, uh, they're successful they're more successful than they even imagined though because she's noticing okay this, something's wrong here this is too much this is too powerful and then uh, this delightful fellow shows up and um, so, yeah, it is quirky, but it's quirky done extremely well. Um, art's fantastic, but I got to get to this one full, like, two-page spread here. As Hoover goes into um, what appears to be just a storage closet on the third floor of a public library, but which is, in fact... The Great Library of the Sightless. Look at this. Dude, man, this dude ought to be doing, like, friggin' Doctor Strange or Doctor Fate. This is not that I'd want him to stop doing this. I actually prefer creators working on their own stuff. This is really cool, man. This is, like, this is why, this is the kind of stuff you get comic books for. Things you could never see in real life. Um, things that would be even hard to realize in film. Eh, now it'd just be a bunch of CGI garbage. Um, imagine them trying to make this, though, practical effects back in the day. So he, he consults this library um, uh, to figure out which demon holds the soul of this um, acquaintance of his and to fight it and uh, finds out much more than he expected um, in doing so. But yeah, this was this was the breakout surprise for me in the bundle that I um, I had my concerns about. But wow, it's a great it's a great book. This one probably my my highest recommendation um, out of the batch. Uh, besides, obviously, Wolf and Batsy, which I was already a major fan of. But you know, really not a bad book in the bunch. I enjoyed all of them. But yeah, Horace Hoover. Horse H. Hoover. I'm sorry. Um, get the man's full name in. New York City's great greatest space-time occult detective vacuum was a real surprise. A fantastic piece of work. Um, one man's one man's uh, labor, and it is it is cool. So I'm gonna go find number one and uh, on this one, and uh, continue collecting the series as future Alterna Comics bundles come out. Big fan of Alterna Comics. Big fan of what uh, Samedi is doing over there. And, um, you know, I've reviewed three books I've gotten through them, three series I've gotten through them, Wolf and Batsy, uh, T-Bone and Throttle, and Tinseltown. I, I enjoyed them all. I love that these are floppies. These are on the old school paper. Um, really well done. And you can see from the cover prices, these, uh, you know, buck ninety buck eight. Six ninety nine, but this is eighty pages. Um, two fifty, buck ninety eight, two fifty for Wolf and Batsy. That sketch cover. They're very reasonably priced, which is nice. It, the one, um, the one problem, and I say problem, it's not really a problem, but the one issue with a lot of the indie stuff out there is, of course, the the price. When you're putting out a long graphic novel sort of format. You know, you're coming in at 20 to $30. And um, that's difficult, in my opinion. If it's a creator who you're unaware of, who you don't know a bunch about, it's a little bit easier for somebody with a name out in the industry to, you know, get people to say, hey, I know their work, I trust them. 25 bucks for this book, awesome. But if you're coming in, you know, really unknown, uh, that's tough. But if you're talking about throwing down a couple bucks, three bucks for a book, you, you can experiment a little bit more. 
it's kind of like, you know, getting books out of the 50 cent or the dollar bin at a, at a comic book shop. I just recently got about $30 worth of, of books out of a 50 cent bin. And a lot of stuff I had meant to get in the past, but didn't or had never read, wanted to. Found some great stuff in there. But, you know, it was like, hey, it's 50 cents for a book. If I don't like it, I have, I'm not out that much. It's not that big a loss. And again, I love that, that Semedi is doing these books at these price points because it lets you, you know, explore some cool stuff and find some really great creators out there, you know. And if um, if Aiello or if uh, or if any of these other creators then put out maybe a graphic novel at $25, $30, you know, I wouldn't bat an eye at buying it because I, I've gotten to experience their work and, and I trust it. So... Um, so there we go. This is Alterna's Winter Bundle. They do more of these bundles. You might want to go out and take a look. I think they're worth it. Um, Samedi doesn't publish uh, bad stuff. This is what I've learned. I've not had a book yet from Alterna that I was disappointed in. He, pr he produces quality stuff. You know, he, he doesn't he doesn't invite people on board who aren't who aren't producing good material. So I think, you know, go take a look at their website. Um, I'll put a link in the uh, description. And look around and, you know, maybe pick up a few back issues. Y you, you know, you can come away with three, four books for, you know, like ten bucks. Um, it's a good investment. Fun reads. Uh, yeah. Love me. Love me some Alterna. Okay. That'll do it for Dad's Den today. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please like, please subscribe, please share with your friends, especially because we'd like to get the word out on some of this quality indie work that's out there. Um, so if you got some some buddies out there who are into comic books, maybe put this in front of them. They might find some stuff they like. In the meantime, God bless you all. Please be kind to one another. And try to have some fun in this crazy, crazy world of ours. I will see you again soon in Dad's Den.